Hey guys, this video I'm going to cover the man in the wall and my speculations on it. I'm gonna cover religion, philosophy, psychology, um, as well as spoilers for some specific stuff from shows, um, which when I get to it, I'll tell you what it is. Um, this video is gonna be a lot. I kind of didn't want to cover it because it's gonna I, I just wanted to do Warframe videos, <laughs> um, but this one is gonna it's gonna paint me in a specific light. So yes, I'm spiritual, and yes, I know a bit about psychology and a shitload about mythology and stuff like that. Um, I didn't really want to get into that. I didn't want this to be what my YouTube was about, but you guys, you guys may in the future start asking weird questions about this stuff uh, feel free to answer anything you want to know but I I think I have the answers to the man in the wall specifically because I know this stuff and that's why I'm going to try to answer it for you guys so real quick uh, summary what is the man in the wall uh, he's kind of like a ghost like entity um, that is obviously from the void that's what it seems like at first glance right or maybe some don't think it's real at all and they think it's just Rel and his psychological state and stuff like that. No, I'm pretty sure he's real. Um, so what happened? So when when um, the man of the wall is talking to you, that's how I'm going to address him because that's what, how they address him, but I don't think that's not what I would have called him. But anyway, he's always telling us things like we owe him without us, without him will be nothing. Uh, so what happened? Uh, I think we went in the void. Well, I know we went in the void, obviously. Uh, we're the only ones who came back from the void, and then we came back with powers. Because, obviously, he's given us those powers. Um, he's given us void powers, void abilities, immunity to the void, unlike everybody else that touches the void, right? Here's the scary thing that people aren't really thinking about. Like, I know people are like, yeah, let's hurry up and get the man in the wall update so we could fight him or whatever. What the fuck are you talking about? Um, I don't mean to, like, insult you, but he gave us this power. He is a real being, uh, and he gave us this power. He can take this power away, <laughs> right? The odds are he controls the void, so he can take our void power away. If he takes our void far away, that means we can't void blast him. We can't do any of this void tricky shit. We can't do... Uh, uh transition tr whatever the fuck that's called right um which means we can't use our warframe we would just be a a normal little child running around not even a normal child will be weaker than a normal child because we're used to relying on void powers and on warframes like normal kids may be like doing parkour or skateboarding around or fighting in the underground i don't know but we didn't do that stuff we're used to hiding behind these abilities and these frames we're not we have a handicap when it comes to this uh so yeah if if we were to lose our void power we were to lose our warframes we would not be able to fight anything <laughs> a normal grenier would be a pain in the ass uh, it would basically be like playing it would basically without the man in the wall or if the man in the wall would retract his gifts to us we would basically it would take the game back to Dark Sectors, the, rich, the original DE game, right? Which would be amazing because I, I kind of love that. I don't like the super overpoweredness, but yeah, that that's what would happen. Um, or if he can't take the powers back, the odds are he would likely be immune to void damage because he is the void. He is from the void. He controls the void. If he gave us the power to do that, he can do that. I don't think it's going to damage him. That's not a fight we could win. It also wouldn't really be a physical fight in our reality. That doesn't actually make sense. Because he's a ghost-like interdimensional being that's not in our physical reality. What are you going to do? Are you going to shoot a ghost? Are you going to swing a sword at it? Like, it's, it's not, that's not going to work. So, let me explain why the man in the wall is real. Um, and he's not just you're you're hallucinating or you're having some psychotic break or something um 
it's because there's multiple sources saying the same thing. Um, what is this group? Red Veil. They were worshipping him before. Well, they actually were worshipping Rel, but Rel knew about this. And they knew about this. Other people knew about this. Um, there's even physical proof of this because you're forgetting the giant sh finger in your in the back of your ship. Um, what do you think that is? You think that's some giant creature that lives in the void? Um, go look at the story in uh, behind Lloyd in at uh, the Necrolus. Um, but I'm not gonna pull up all these things like you know if you're here you know this stuff already you just need it to flesh it out for you um so you could see what i see uh so he's real that thing is real it gave us the powers uh it's it's always the same data like even tension like it <laughs> we all have the similar experiences so this is mass hallucinations don't they don't have the same story they don't have the same trajectory like for instance, if we were to have mass hysteria and I see a giant ant, right? Maybe you see like aliens and somebody else sees, I don't know, water and somebody else sees a fire. That's, <laughs> we would all see something different. Uh, or you're thinking that because I say, oh, there's ants everywhere, you're gonna see ants everywhere. But I didn't tell you there's ants everywhere and you already started to see something else. So how do you know something is real or fake? Well, if you're seeing fire and I don't see fire and I'm seeing ants and you don't see ants, the odds are we might both be seeing something fake. But if you're seeing, if I'm like, oh shit, I look down a hallway and I'm like, oh crap, what the heck? And I write down on a piece of paper the what I, I saw goes, right? And I describe what it looks like and I don't show you the paper and you in a piece of paper write down the same thing and then we swap papers with each other and we both have the same exact evidence of what we think we both saw. It's every detail down to the smallest point of what we saw is exactly what the other person said. That to me is 100% evidence that what we both saw is the same thing and it is real. That is what's occurring in Warframe. So is the man in the wall a hallucination? what kind of hallucination would make us all hallucinate the same thing besides something that is real so de always puts in lore from different places in our history it also always puts in ancient philosophies from different places in our history um they also take a few things from different sci-fi places um, not specifically 100% ripping it off, I'm not going to accuse you of that, but they do get inspired and they're like, hey, let's do something like that. And you know, I'm fine with that. I'm not going to be like, you shouldn't copy them. Like, it's fine. If I like the original, I would like this too. Your own interpretation of it, it's fine. So one of the things that, um, that they... I'm going to give you a little bit of my history real quick. So when I was a real small little kid, I used to like... I used to like Indiana Jones. <laughs> I'm pretty old. I may sound younger than I am. I used to watch Indiana Jones a lot when I was a kid. Like I just kept rewatching it. I wanted to be an archaeologist when I grew up. That didn't happen, but it's okay. Um, and then, then I saw Stargate, and that's that's what they take a lot of lore from. And I'm gonna explain to you how in great detail in a bit. But if you don't want s spoilers, uh, maybe you shouldn't listen to this, but I'm gonna go into detail about that But I saw Stargate for the first time when I was a little kid in the movie theater and That that was amazing <laughs> That was amazing to me um, Then I watched every episode of the show when it came out all the versions of the show I was super obsessed with Stargate as well as Tomb Raiders and all that stuff. That's why I went down the mythological knowledge seeking path for so many years of my life um, and that's why I know what they're doing here they're doing a lot of Stargate stuff here and including the man of the wall I'm gonna explain if you give me a chance first I'm gonna give you a little bit of context so you can understand that I'm not just talking out my ass as to the little tidbits that show me one for one this is Stargate um, <laughs> and I'm not just making assumptions okay so first uh, I'm gonna try to pull up an image. I'll find some image of it and then I'll put it here. They have actual Stargates. <laughs> they have actual Stargates in Warframe. They also have the ring teleporting device 
in Stargate. I mean, in Warframe from Stargate. Um, they have Jaffa staffs, which are like from Stargate. <laughs> they have the void like powers are kind of they're they're kind of Stargate ish too, which is what I'm gonna get into in a bit. Uh, but let I'm gonna talk about so like okay in Stargate there's there's beings that pose as gods and they're not gods but they pose as gods and they're called uh, the Goa'u right so they're high and mighty ancient Egyptian and other mythological uh, gods but they're actually aliens uh, but to what was that saying it's kind of like any technology that you don't understand is gonna seem like magic to you i never get it word for word right when i'm saying anything but that's the gist of the saying uh, so anything that you can't decipher what the hell is technologically happening is going to look like magic to you so to primitive planets all around the space uh they see these beings coming with super high advanced technology and they're like oh my god these guys are gods and then who can say otherwise like you oppose them they'll kill you what the hell are you gonna do about it <laughs> you, what, what can you do um so the guau were posing as gods even on our planet they were like ra cyrus anubis all of these guys um so the thing is they weren't gods they just have high tech but this is where i'm seeing just some little similarities in warframe so warframes seem like gods to the average man or to Grenier, right? They seem super godly, like Jesus Christ. I remember when I first started playing, I was like, what the hell? Uh, that's super superior. So Warframes seem like gods to the average man. And then Sentience, their gods are literally the Oregon because the Oregon made Sentience giving life, give, making a creation, <laughs> makes you a god, technically. So the Oregon are gods to the sentience. Uh, and even in Stargate, uh, there's a similarity here with the Oregon. So Oregon can jump from body to body. It's like, oh, my body's old, it's withering, it's dying, or it's ugly and that one looks better. I can just use Kuva and jump over there and that's my new body. Um, so in Stargate, there's actually that, that's what they do. So the goal, they live forever or they, they don't actually live forever. They can live a really long time, um, but they have to keep jumping from host to host to host. Uh, they're actually a little worm creature, uh, which is called a symbiote, and they'll possess a, a body of any species that can, you know, host, because uh, it's kind of like a parasite. Any body that can host that parasite, uh, they can go in there. They usually use humans. Um, because it makes it easier for filming, let's be honest. Uh, so they're, they'll use a host until that host grows too old, that body grows too old, or it's too damaged, and then they'll just like, ah, whatever, I'm abandoning this, and then they'll jump to a new thing. That's the same thing the Aura can do. Even the the, the Lich Queens, uh, the Tin Queens, whatever the hell they're called, they said they were going to do this to us. That's what they were trying to do. They were trying to take our body because her body is decaying. She looks disgusting she's rotting because of freaking the failure in their genetic uh cloning um so they were trying to use our body they were going to take us as a host just like they do in stargate what a surprise uh, i'm not trying to blame you guys i love stargate but i'm just trying to say i see <laughs> i see where you're getting a lot of your inspiration from and i guess other people maybe you don't you don't see it because stargate is old let's be honest you guys i mean they're making a new show and stuff like that but maybe a lot of you guys don't know stargate and that's why you aren't drawing these similarities and you aren't coming to the same conclusions i'm coming to as well as lore and other stuff but that's that's for later for now let's talk about stargate so it's not just that warframes look like gods to normal humans and then oregon look like gods to maybe the tenno and to sentience right uh because then that translates to the jaffa look like maybe gods to normal humans they're the foot soldiers of the goal which is like the orican in our reality but there is something else in warframe as well in the later in the, in the later uh seasons uh there's a thing called the ori so the ori 
unlike the glow the glow are using technology to look like they're using magic and they're like doing impressive things and cheating death and doing magic blast with their palms and all kind of crazy stuff but the Ori, who you know the people in stargate assumed they were going to be false gods as well they actually came and they were they were doing some pretty fancy stuff that wasn't technology it was straight up magic and they were like what the hell <laughs> they're actually using magic it's not technology like what what the fuck um so then it then it, they actually look like gods because you're doing magic uh, are you are your god is this is this religion what's happening here so sure the tunnel are using tech and the Oregon are using tech and biology and stuff sure and even the sentients are doing that so nothing is magical and super religious yet but when it comes to the man at the wall this is something else this is not technology this is looking like magic so it's not just like oh it's somebody's putting the wool over eyes and we're thinking this is magic when it's tech no it's actually magic but that doesn't mean they're gods is my point because the Ori weren't gods they seemed like gods they were acting like gods they were posing as gods they may be indecipherable from gods but they are not gods and neither is the man at the wall all right so i got one more little bit of stargate stuff and then i'll move on to a different category explaining man in the wall anyway so in stargate universe they find a ship this is a major spoiler so don't listen if you don't want to know this stuff uh, but they find a ship called destiny and it's made by ancient race and stuff like that that's that's not the point the point is they the characters wanted to understand why that ship is there what's the point of it this is an ancient superior race with higher intelligence and stuff why why did they do this what's the goal of this so eventually they figure out what's the point of the ship the point of the ship was how can i say this there was a beacon there was some kind of signal sent before time and space existed and it was sent out i don't know where it was sent out because nothing existed yet but it was sent out i guess you uh, my mouth wants to say space because i don't have a word for it but it was sent out before time and space existed nothing can exist from our point of view before time and space exists but it did and the ancients were like what the fuck <laughs> they had to find out what that was how what what um, whatever so that's what it was about now dang I had to get the door and I forgot what I was about to say um, so I don't know if it was I think it was tension tension said something like remember I never get it word for word I just get the gist of what they meant he said something like the void or the man in the wall existed before time and space existed or something like that maybe i'm saying the wrong person somebody in the comments correct me uh, because i'm not 100 percent sure who said it but somebody in warframe said this so now you're like okay so what happened in warf i mean what happened in uh stargate so i can know what's gonna happen here the problem is uh the problem is that when they made uh stargate universe they were trying to make the show kind of like a half breed of stargate and a half breed of battlestar galactica and they felt sure on both both sides of the equation they, they couldn't be one or the other and it died uh so the show got canceled and we didn't actually see the conclusion of it uh which which kind of drives me crazy because like what what was it what was it all right but enough joking around like my theories as to what it was i already had my pretty much that my trajectory of what it was going to be so uh time travel exists in stargate uh so and they're always messing with it like sometimes by accident but they, they always stick their finger in shit they shouldn't stick their finger in um i kind of thought that one possibility was while trying to pursue what could possibly be behind the intelligence behind the beacon at the beginning before time and space it actually could have been them trying to figure out what it was they were what it was like Ouroboros uh, and my real world hypothesis of like what is the origin of the universe I know I said I was spiritual at the beginning of this but that doesn't mean I believe in a god so my hypothesis uh, pretty much has always been since I was pretty much a kid is that um, everything bled into our universe and into existence in our plane of reality 
from somewhere else. It's, it's just that simple. Um, so we like everything spawned and bubbled out through a white hole. And on the other side of that white hole is a completely different type of universe with completely different type of rules and laws of reality. And you may be like, oh, but that's just a cop out as to explain how our universe came to be, but doesn't explain how their universe came to be. And I could use that whole religious thing that people try to use. Well, this thing always existed. <laughs> I'm sorry to pick on you guys, uh, religious people out there. But what I'm trying to say is perhaps the laws of that reality, of that universe, it's not like the laws of ours. So it's not governed by the same rules. Maybe it doesn't have to be created. Maybe time doesn't go in a straight line like we assume it does here. Like space doesn't even go in a freaking straight line for crying out loud. There's so many curves and wobbles. It's so freaking weird. So what does any of this have to do with the man in the wall? Well, if the void existed before our universe existed, um, then people may come to the assumption, which is why I gave you all of this context, they might come to the assumption that that's a superior being, that's God, that created our universe. No, that's not what it is. Even if our universe spawns, like it bubbled out and came into being from their universe, from the void, uh, that doesn't mean he's a god. If that thing predates our entire universe, that thing is still not a god. If that thing made us, okay, then it's a god. Oh, fair enough. But I don't think it did because, I don't know, it just seems very curious. And I'm going to go into its characteristics and psychology in a bit, but it doesn't seem to know, is what I'm trying to say. Like, a god would know what we are, what we're doing. Pretty much everything it's it doesn't know our choices 100 percent. it's like if it did it wouldn't be so abused and curious while watching us anyway so the reason i gave you all of that explanation and context is because this next part where i'm going to talk about uh maybe religion or spirituality stuff it you may get the wrong impression so i had to knock that out first Okay, so I'm gonna go into his powers and stuff like this. So basically, the man in the wall, <laughs> I hate that name, uh, he has void powers. He gave us the ability to do void powers. He has void immunity, obviously. He can do intrinsics. He can, uh, why am I saying this? Because that stuff is magic, right? That stuff is like straight up magic. There's no explanation for it in Warframe. You can't be like, well, this is this. No, that's magic. <laughs> um, and if you look at it spiritually, uh, your your soul, the Tenno, is possessing the body of an uh, Umbra or a Warframe. An uh, empty Umbra or Warframe. Uh, so that's possession. So like I said earlier, or I think I said earlier, I meant to say earlier, is um, so he, if he can take away the abilities he gave us, which is the ability to do intrinsics, is that what you call it when you jump in the Warframe? Uh, void powers, void immunity, but he can do that stuff, we basically become a helpless child. Uh, and he should be able to do that stuff because he gave us the ability in the first place. So he that would be, that's pretty much unbeatable. Like from our point of view, we, we how can we beat that? We would turn into a little child and he would be a Warframe at most. So he could be all the Warframes at once if he wanted to. Um, that's not really beatable guys and this is only counting if he's taking solid form because memory is an interdimensional being uh so sure some doorway could open up somehow and he could walk through because his finger is on the other side it's in your ship for crying out loud sure but that's something that if he comes into our plane of existence now we have a chance to smack his ass down because now he's a solid entity or if he jumps in a Warframe, sure, we, technically we could fight him, we could shoot him and try to hit him with a sword. He would be more powerful than us, but it's a possibility that he could be fought. But he doesn't have to do that. He's like a ghost. So I'm not going to pick on people, but I think uh, some people may be thinking that the worst he can do is walk in our dimension or the worst he can do is possess us. That is not even the tip of the iceberg um you have this is why i'm gonna bring in religion and philo uh, mythology into the equation right here or spirituality if you believe it so back in the old days uh 
before Christianity and stuff like that, like really back in the old days. Um, some of the most powerful people, uh, they were like spiritualists, you know, druids, shamans, necromancers, stuff like this. People that can communicate with the other side. Um, they weren't frowned upon, they weren't seen as some bad guy at the edge of society. They were actually seen as the helpful people that basically help you when you have a problem. Like you have an illness, you don't know what to do. You go to them, you, whatever it is, always like, like if you want an example, look at old movies or maybe even movies today. Like every time there's a hero and he's about to go on a great journey or she, what do they do? They like go to the, the wizard or the witch on the outside of town and like, please help me. I need guidance. I need help. What do I do? Like, what's my path or give me a weapon or where can I get this weapon? It's always some wise spiritual person at the edge of the town. They don't think like everybody else. And that's the person that gives them the knowledge and they go out there. Now, the reason I brought this up is because theoretically, the way you're getting the knowledge uh, to find this weapon or the results of this, uh, the outcome of this freaking event, like who's going to win this war or whatever, is because you're getting the answer from the other side. The person is basically uh, using divination uh, to foresee what's gonna happen like but you could be like what's the root of it it's like okay so your ancestor told you or a ghost told you or a deity told you uh, but it doesn't matter what you want to call this being because it's a spirit so this interdimensional being told you this stuff that you wouldn't have otherwise known because your scent your five senses haven't told you it you didn't see it, smell it, taste it, touch it. You have no knowledge of this, but they came and they gave it to you. So now I think you're starting to get my point. So if your enemy was to know every little fucking detail about everything you've ever done, everything you're doing, everything you would ever be doing, and everything, all your people, same thing that I just said, for all your people, uh, they know your battle plans. They know how you would react in any situation. They know how what weapons you're going to use. They know how to manufacture the greatest weapons that would ever exist because they can for they can see into the future and therefore they can go back and tell your enemy, "Hey, this is how you build the strongest weapon, the most end game weapon ever." That is what you can get from divination, from being a necromancer. This is why when Christianity came along, they were basically terrified of this and they basically made it a taboo. Like, no, no, you, you can't do divination. You can't do necromancy. All of this is bad because it's terrifying. Like the power your enemies could have if it's real is terrifying. This is the real danger of the man in the wall. And for those of you that are like, this is nothing. This is not a dangerous like okay think about it realistically like let's say it's the apocalypse right and i was chasing you down and i'm I'm coming for you it's think about it like you have to sleep at some time you have to take a shit at some time you have to do i don't know anything at some time you're letting your guard down but if i was psychic or i use divination and some spirit is telling me because they can see they are they're, how they see is not linear in time they can see anywhere in the past or future theoretically so if they come back and give me this knowledge of when you're most vulnerable when you're dead asleep and lightning could strike and you won't wake up and i could come and get you in that split second where you're most vulnerable this this is the danger i'm talking about but if you want to go down a different uh religious route or mythological route from my point of view and you want to go to like christianity and stuff like that well when they came along they basically rewrote rewrote the rules and they're like no your ancestors their spirits aren't real your deities they're not real uh, ghosts they're not real everything you thought was real is just a demon or a jinn um and therefore now people that communicate with the demons or the jinn are now outcasts it's now a taboo so before that it wasn't anything it wasn't anything bad they were just sought out people now they're now they're bad people now they're the bad guys because christianity made it that way that's why it's in modern day it's kind of seen as a freaky thing 
to be like, I'm a necromancer. They'd be like, whoa, you, what the fuck? <laughs> it would be seen as freaky because Christianity made it that way. Yeah, it was their intention. Um, so what if, if Warframe, if DE is trying to make the man in the wall demon-like or djinn-like, then what are the ramifications of that? So I forgot to say, like, what are the benefits if it's a, a spirit, like a, a spirit? Uh, they could uh, not only give you intel, but they could theoretically tip the scales of your luck. So you could be jinxed, hexed, or cursed, or you could have your luck increased, as well as they could do that to your enemy or your loved ones. Uh, of course, you could be like, but what about if they have an ancestor doing that for them? Yes, then it's a battle. It's a counter battle. It's like, who has more uh, or who has stronger? Now, if it's a jinn or a demon, Christianity tried to ward people away from doing this. So they tried to add additional rules. They're like, sure, the jinn and the, the jinn could give you powers. The jinn doesn't grant you wishes. <laughs> that's yeah, I know it turned into a genie in modern day, but that's not really what they were about. So sure, they could give you abilities. They're like, oh, you could you could throw fire on your hand now, or uh, you could turn shit into gold. I don't know what whatever the hell it is you want. It, it's not a wish. It's just like you get an ability. Uh, I guess there are limits to it, but you would get an ability. But what Christianity was saying is, sure, you get all this stuff, but then the jinn is one day going to be like, ha ha ha, now it's time for me to cash in. Now, since I did all this stuff for you, you owe me, Tenno. <laughs> right? And you may be like, oh, but now I have all these abilities, so I'm not scared. Shh, you're forgetting one thing, because they added this to the equation as well. Christianity, I'm talking about. They said, those powers aren't actually yours. That's the jinn's power, and they were just doing it for you so you would think that you were getting more powerful no they were just tricking you so they could get a favor from you in the future and that's what it's supposed to be about not all jinn were supposed to be like that jinn are kind of like human they were supposed to like some are bad some are malicious some are just nice and they would do it for no reason so that they actually are good jinn and now let's talk about like the psychology behind one maybe the man in the wall as well as if he's jinn like uh because what do jinn actually want what are jinn actually doing this for like if he's jinn like this is what he would be doing it for sure i told you they all have their own goals and their own ideas and their own scale of good and evil so they could be good or bad and or no true it doesn't matter but what are the bad ones do they basically are let me throw some psychology in here so i'm an infj and if you know socionics it's my child function it's basic what that means is basically when i'm most childlike when i'm trolling or i'm trying to have fun my ti kicks in and that's basically me wanting to fuck with people like mentally like i want to trick you and troll you like loki or something i, I want to i'm gonna have fun at the expense of tricking you not tricking you like oh shit no you made me shave off all my hair or oh i lost my fortune not that kind of trick that's fucked up it's it's more like a psychological trick uh to fool you so jinn take great pleasure in this um as well as infjs that's why i made that comparison um so this is what a jinn would do they would watch you out of amusement and they would do something really dumb like for instance in the old days, they used to uh, write off this disorder as as jinn, a jinn doing this to you. And it was, I don't, I don't know what it's called. Oh, it's obsessive compulsion disorder. That's what it is. So you would like, like I've done this in the past. I'm not going to lie. Like you close something and then you're like, I, I'm not sure if it's really closed right. So you like open it again and then you close it again. And you're like, oh, but, but did it actually seal correctly? And then you open it again and you close it. And you could stay there for like hours doing this and what they wrote this off as being is like that's a jinn fucking with you that's what that is a jinn is there just laughing at your expense they're getting amusement from you this is kind of it really does look like what um the man in the wall is doing he's very he's looking very jinn like for my opinion this is the kind of stuff they do now demons or nephilim what their whole thing was about is they're kind of like raffle they kind of like want they don't have a theoretically they're not supposed to 
well, the later versions of Christian, they're not really supposed to have a moral compass. They're just till they're broken on the bad side, which is not really real in comparison to the old way. But whatever. Let's say that they're going with the modern way, which is they're super broken on the evil side. So they basically just live to torment. So like that's their only function. Like, haha, let me do this evil thing, right? That's what modern people think. Um, so from their point of view, they don't actually have a physical being and they can't like drag your body to the bowels of hell. No, they can't do that shit. They can't leave scratch marks on your floor or knock on your door. They can't do this stuff. Like, come on, guys. Uh, what it was supposed to be like, even from the religious way, is they don't have a physical body. That's what happened in the flood. They got killed, the Nephilim. Um, so they're disembodied souls and they can't go to heaven so they're just roaming around our plane of existence and they're supposed to be teasing and tormenting us and seducing us into doing dumb shit which is going to be self-sabotaging or kind of like the jinn it is amusing for them at our expense but unlike the jinn that do it for a trolly silly way for their amusement where they're like sitting there eating chips laughing their ass off at us right next to us but we can't see them the, the demon or the Nephilim would be doing something harmful like it may theoretically it's supposed to make you want to like kill your kids or do something really bad like that's the extent of that but I've not seen the man in the wall do any of this behavior he's not once suggested us to do something as far as I remember or manipulated anything like or come at a time where it's our greatest misfortune and they're like ha ha yes i've not seen that so they're not showing nephilim the man in the wall if it's one person it's not showing um demonic uh elements it's more showing jinn elements so i know i talk a shit loud if you've fallen asleep uh let me give you a quick summary so what could the man in the wall possibly be so it could be lost souls to the void and it's like possibly a collective consciousness because of that or multiple spirits there that's what it could be lost people there um it could be an interdimensional being it's just a creature outside of our phase of reality and sometimes we can catch a glimpse of it like a ghost but it's not a ghost it's not because a ghost is supposed to be a dead person or a dead thing it could just simply be something existing on a parallel phase of reality like i'm trying to say another thing it could be is consciousness it could just be consciousness like in the void like not attached to a physical body i know that our realm of reality says these rules got to be like this consciousness got to be inside of a body but that's a different plane of existence and when you go to another universe or something that's different rules they can apply another option that it could be is that could in truth be a god <laughs> i don't think it's going to be but it could be and then the specific details of mythology that de may be going down is it may be a demon which is a nephilim as well or a jinn or a ghost right these are things it could be I personally think it's more gin like than anything else um, but regardless of whatever the fuck he is it it's really irrelevant um, because it will progress at his pace he will do things when he wants um, what are the negative side effects like if he's our enemy um, well if he's a god we could cease to exist then he just blanks us out of existence I don't think he's a god if he's a demon he would have been suggesting us to do dumb shit which he's not or laughing at our misfortunes which i've not seen if he's spirits or jinn um he may tip luck in our favor or against our favor depending on if we make this choice or that choice if we get in it's good gracious like light a candle <laughs> like if you could in the game light a candle for him or something and show respect and show like that you know you acknowledge him and then it, it, everything would be cool like that's that's the real world that that's how it would be done in the real world you do something like this 
Uh, but if you're going to show disrespect to a creature like that, if it was to be a soul or a djinn or something, you're going to disrespect them. Get the fuck out of my house or something. Like, that could have been their house hundreds of years before you moved in there. You're just going to think it's your house. Um, tell you, I'm spiritualist. <laughs> uh, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is if you were to get on the bad side of this creature, the things you could do could be very detrimental. Um, let's say in a game, because it's a game obviously, but uh, my luck is shit. My drop rate luck is shit. You know how long it took me to get a Necromech damage pod? Um, I just got one not so long ago. It took a long time and that's only because they changed the drop rate. Like Jesus Christ. Imagine if you had bad luck on top of your bad luck because they're tipping the scale and giving you more bad luck um, no thank you um, I will light a thousand candles for you man in the wall just leave my luck alone like I don't even need you to increase it to be better just don't make it worse <laughs> and if it's going by Christian if D is going by Christianity and it's gin like or demon like uh, it could be ultimately that they want a favor in the future or they're setting up setting us up for sabotage long-term sabotage or they want possessions but like I said uh, this stuff is really cheap in comparison to what I was saying before because if they come into our physical world let's say my body's my warframe is possessed um, by the man in the wall uh, my clan my brother and my friends and stuff they could just beat the crap out of my warframe and expel him like <laughs> that's what the hell's the problem of that it's not really a threat if once something spiritual comes into our physical plane of existence now they're susceptible to getting their ass kicked <laughs> and since we're warframes it shouldn't be a problem and like i said before okay but what if it's jinn i mean like not even if it's jinn but like the man in the wall gave us these powers so if he's able to take them away then we would be insufficient at doing damage we would be just a helpless child okay but there's still the might of the grenier and stuff like that Maybe they, no, they wouldn't be able to do anything because we've been kicking their ass as a Warframe. So the Man of the Wall will be doing the same thing as a Warframe. I don't know, but I'm just saying, like, it just doesn't seem threatening to me once you enter our physical realm. Even if it's a giant interdimensional creature, like maybe some people assume, and he just comes through some kind of void rift, and there's some giant walking around trying to hit us, it's like, I'm not scared of that. Like, that's a physical thing. And if you're physical, I can physically hurt you. You're going to physically have arteries. I will be puncturing. It's not really, I'm not really scared. Um, but if it's something that you can't touch, you can't smack this thing, you can't shoot this thing. And it's just, you don't even know what this thing is. I think that's more intimidating. I think that's a scarier route. I mean, I'm not scared of it. I'm a spiritualist, like I said, but I could see why other people would be scared of something you can't see. You don't know where it is. You don't know what it's doing. You don't know what it wants. And you can't do anything about it. I think that's way cooler. And the fact of if they're going down the spirit route or the jinn route, the fact that it could give your enemies intel endlessly. Tell them everything. Your most vulnerable times who your allies are, who your enemies is, how you go to react to this situation, you could be completely set up for sabotage. Just like, imagine you're fighting somebody that's completely psychic. They know every move you're gonna make. You can't win, because they already know what you're gonna do. So I don't really find the man in the wall scary. I mean, I find it fun and cool, uh, but I don't find it scary or intimidating. I'm not, I don't feel like some kind of looming threat. <laughs> uh, that's not how I think. The worst possible thing that could po that the story could possibly have for him is that he's basically jinn like That's the worst thing they could do. And he could be a bad jinn. And therefore, we made a deal a long time ago when we were in 10-0, right? To basically survive and to get out of there, to get these void powers. We could have made a deal that we don't know because we don't know what happened back then yet. 100%. We could have made a deal with these with the man in the wall and therefore now that we're the player and it's not just backstory one day he could want to cash it in and it might be something that we as the player would not want to do something that's dreadful uh something we owe them that we literally can't do or we don't we would not want to do like nobody would choose this choice 
and then therefore we would have to suffer the wrath of a jinn uh, basically forever. I had more stuff, but I can't really remember what they were at the moment. Um, sorry I didn't have gameplay footage for this video, but it was a really long video. And I don't think you wanted to stare at my, my uh, Tenno just sitting there in my ship. Anyway, see you guys next time.